All right, today's IPSA R3 class is about submitting an absence request. So if you're a soldier or an HR professional and you need to submit your absence request or submit one on behalf of a soldier, we are gonna go over that lesson right now. So I am logged in as just a regular member and I am going to initiate an absence request. I will start by clicking on the My Absence tile here, and I have a menu here, so I can pick chargeable, non-chargeable, and administrative. And so these are all covered in 600-8-10, I'm not gonna bore you with those, but uh, I will throw a chart up on the left, um, and it will, it will show you which categories of leaves fall underneath these three absence types. So we're gonna pick a chargeable absence, and it's going to be an absence. And so the chart, well, real quick, so we just need to read and understand this advance of leave. Uh, <clears throat> and then the reason, so these reasons, uh, one through 16, correspond to the absence type. And again, you can just find these in 600-8-10, and then the user manual, the IPSA user guide, uh, also has a, a chart. And I've just, uh, I'll throw a picture up here on the left of those. But for the purpose of this, we're just going to go ahead and pick an annual leave or ordinary leave. And the training, the leaves day start is going to be, uh, we'll pick, um, we'll pick the 28th. And we'll have it end on the 1st of April. So it's going to take five days leave, it's going to take a week off. Uh, <clears throat> the date of departure and return is anticipated to be the same. And so this is where the individual is going to pick their supervisor. Now, the supervisor ID that will populate when this pulls up is gonna be a very small list of people. And those people are predicated on who's completed commander, manager, or HR data user training. No one else will, will show up unless they've completed that training. So that's important when you're talking about building your organizational leave policy as it applies to the implementation of IPSA. Um, some organizations will want it all to go to company commander. Other organizations may delegate that to platoon leaders. Um, but essentially what's, what you need to understand is that whomever you put as that supervisor will approve the leave. And that will update the duty status roster with a leave uh, category. Now you can add somebody, um, the person who, who gets the initial uh, absence request can add an, another person beyond themselves, but the leave form has already been approved. So uh, make sure that as S1s, company commanders, you understand that um, the people that will, the menu of individuals that, who, who will be available to uh, approve a leave or a proven absence request is based upon the subcat if say training that they have commander, manager, and HR data user. So <clears throat> this company's policy for the purpose of this lesson is that all uh, absence requests will be routed directly to the commander and that they will have a company leave request form that has been signed off by the platoon chain of command uh, attached as well as like LESs and anything else that they would want. So we're gonna go ahead and pick the company commander here. All right, so we've got the commander and now the individual submitting the absence request can put a note. Um, we'll cast leave for, um, you know, mothers or for wife's birthday. Yeah, I can't spell. And then the contact name, so again, refer to 600-8-10, but um, this is essentially the same thing would go on on DA-31, is uh, how can you be contacted on leave? So he can put uh, himself, or she could put her, her husband, or wh whatever, uh, but a, a, a way to, to, um, to get in contact with you when you're on leave. So we'll put uh, Mrs. Jones and me, uh, 803 
8675309. That means we need to change that to Jenny. Address is uh, 1234 somewhere. Street. And then the geolocate is going to be a search menu, which allows you to search um, by state, city, uh, county. So you can actually um, just do a search criteria. So if you wanted to say, I want to go to New York, it would give you all of the options for New York. So uh, we'll go to Cayuga, New York, and we'll put in a zip code. It's probably going to be one, two, three, four, five or something. And now we're going to add the attachments. So again, this is going to be based upon unit policy. Um, so we will just go ahead and insert a file. Like we said in this example, the company has a, a, uh, a company leave request that has shown that the platoon chain of command knows that the individual wants to take leave. So we'll go ahead and attach that, upload it. Upload has been completed. Um, and then company leave request form. And that's it. We're ready to submit. So take another review at it. Annual leave, five days. Here's the dates. Going to the commander. Got some contact information. It's got the company leave request form. And so we'll go ahead and hit submit. Are we sure? Yes, we are. And that's it. The absence request has been successfully submitted and now it's pending signature or approval by the supervisor ID, which in this case is the company commander. All right, so uh, make sure you subscribe, uh, follow along. We're gonna have some more videos on absence requests. We're gonna do one for the company commander or the supervisor who would sign the absence request. We're also gonna show how uh, once it's approved, how the individual can see the approved leave and either request to cancel it or change it or what have you. Um, so stick around. We're also on Twitter and Facebook. If you look us up, you'll find that we uh, post some, you know, some relevant information there. But as always, defend and serve.